Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from the FIDE World Cup 2023 where uh, the participants will be fighting for the chance to be in the next candidates tournament. So the top three finishers will qualify for the next FIDE candidates tournament and the first game that we are showing is the first game that um, uh, I think is the first game that actually finished in round one of this year's FIDE World Cup. Uh, we have a Turkish international master Edis Gurel uh, versus uh, Serbian grandmaster Velimir Ivic um, and uh, it's quite quite uh, quite an attacking game you guys will love it uh, one thing that i do have to mention that it's uh, uh, first 16 moves over the game are known theory and then the game just uh, completely collapses so you'll see what i mean by this and it's a very important tournament for uh, it is uh, not just of course the you know five strong opponents but he al he, he already has two uh, grandmaster norms uh, if he gains one more he becomes a grandmaster himself and he qualified for this event uh, by uh, getting 14th place in the european championship where the top 20 get um, seeded directly into the uh, FIDE World Cup. And um, uh, may maybe you don't know this, the top 50 uh, via rating do not play in round one. So Magnus, Hikaru, Fabian, Isha, they will not be playing in the first round. They are seeded directly into the second round. And I think Velimir Ivic is uh, some, something like 54th seed. So he was very, very close to actually skipping the first round altogether. Uh, now, that being said, uh, let's uh, check out this very nice game. Edis Gurel uh, has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. Like I said, it will be a uh, very well-known theoretical struggle. Knight of 3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, the Rui Lopez, and now a6. Morphy's defense, bishop to a4, knight to f6, and castles. And here... As this is a classical game, we will uh, discuss some of the options that uh, Black has. Uh, bishop to e7 and b5 are the uh, top moves in this position, but here we have knight captures on e4, the, the open way to play the Morphe's defense. Uh, d4, and now bishop to e7. Rook to e1, chases away the knight, but now first pawn to b5. And there are three options that white can go for here. Uh, obviously, you can attack the... Uh, or you, you could capture the knight on e4. You could advance the pawn to d5 and attack the knight on c c6 or you could just move the bishop back to b3 uh, all three lines are very very interesting in the game bishop to b3 was played but i'm just going to quickly show you what happens if you if you capture on e4 then you get d5 the rook gets attacked knight captures on e5 now threatening the c6 knight knight captures rook captures and only now b captures on a4 and now after queen to e1 preventing black from castling bishop to e6 and now let's say pawn to f4 preparing pawn to f5 so g6 and then white just continues development knight to c3 and so on and white will have a very comfortable game black has a, a ruined pawn structure on the queen side but that also means that black has the semi-open b file for his rook and black does have the bishop pair so it's a trade-off uh, if you if you uh, want to allow this to black then you should definitely play rook captures on e4 another thing is pawn to d5 which will be met with knight to c5 just getting your knight out of harm's way and attacking the bishop on a4 and after the bishop moves you will play knight to a5 you will really go after that bishop and after knight captures you will play d6, chase away the knight, and something like knight to c6. Captures, captures, knight captures on b3, a captures, you will castle, and okay, there's this annoying pawn on c6, but as we know from, uh, from uh, theory, nothing to be worried about. So after this b5 move, we have bishop to b3, avoiding rook captures on e4 and d5 altogether, and now pawn to d5. Again, all known theory. D captures on e5, bishop to e6, and now pawn to c3. We have castles by Ivich, and now knight b3 to d2. Uh, knight to c5 attacking the bishop uh, and now okay bishop to c2 is a well-known move knight to f1 is a well-known move here we have knight to d4 uh, and now knight captures on d4 c captures and now not taking the bishop but knight to d3 attacking the rook which is fine ed is uh, uses this to lift his rook to e3 then you can shift it uh, to g3 to attack the black king knight captures on c1 rook captures and now pawn to a5 preparing pawn to a4 again all known moves uh, rook e to c3, uh, doubling up here, going after the c7 pawn, and there is a game where uh, rook to c8 was played, I think, even a few games, but here we have pawn to a4 by Ivic, uh, and it is now, as of move 16, that we have a completely new game. Now, look at what happens. Bishop back to c2, of course, the bishop has to move, and it's very useful on this diagonal. Pawn to a3, just messing up um, uh, Edis's uh, queenside uh, pawn structure. Uh, b captures on a3. You could also play b4. Uh, I'm just gonna, you know, point that out here as it's a very nice move. The problem is if you play bishop captures on b4, then uh, no worries. You can just play rook captures on c7 and the queen cannot take the rook because bishop captures on h7 and the queen hangs. So 
you don't really gain all that much by capturing here and if you play rook to c8 again uh, you will defend the pawn with rook to b1 and you will have a great position with black's pawn on a3 being weak so b4 will actually be a very very strong pawn uh, controlling the c5 square very nicely uh, but okay b captures on a3 was played we have bishop captures on a3 attacking the rook on c1 rook to b1 and now pawn to c5 so all makes sense those are very very good moves d captures on c5 and now pawn to d4 chases away the rook rook to g3 and here uh for reasons that uh, i will not uh, explain uh, as it will spoil the moment uh, black has to play pawn to d3 and then the game continues uh it will sort of uh, break the harmony uh, of, of white's piece but here bishop captures on c5 was played right away and now Velimir's position is completely lost so feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh uh, elusive idea uh, for it is uh, while I give you a couple of seconds it is not an easy uh, combination to spot you have to really look deep So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this beautiful checkmating sequence. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Bishop Captures on h7 with check. That's the move that wins. And I'm sure you guys uh, thought of it because then the queen comes into the game. But what, what comes after that? That was the part where you had to look real deep. Uh, king Captures on h7 and now queen to h5 with check. King to g8 and of course queen to h6. Now threatening checkmate. Uh, only one way to stop this pawn to g6 and now comes knight to e4 and you cannot allow knight to f6 check this ends the game so bishop back to e7 and now uh, look at this beautiful move rook to f3 point is that if knight to f6 check lands bishop capture uh, sorry about that bishop captures and pawn captures once the pawn comes to f6 uh, there will uh, be no stopping queen to g7 checkmate so how can you stop this you can't push the f pawn you just lose the g pawn uh, is there anything you can do here uh, well, you could play bishop to f5. This uh, sort of breaks the, the the harmony again of white's attackers, uh, but it doesn't really do all that much as uh, Eddie's just breaks through the position with a beautiful rook captures on f5. The point is the same. You have to gain control over the f6 square, and if the rook is captured, then knight to f6 check. You have to capture only move, pawn captures, and now it's checkmate on the next move, or you have to give up your queen, uh, but you, you don't have any compensation to give up the queen like this. It's, it's a queen and rook against two rooks. You are getting checkmate it basically in in a couple of moves so after rook captures on f5 rook to a6 was played uh adding a defender to the sixth rank uh, but it doesn't matter just rook back to f3 and he was in this position on move 28 that velimir ivic resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here the rook is coming to h3 and it is impossible to stop checkmate whatever you do so of course he just resigned here uh, so, uh, really, really great start uh, for uh, for young uh, Edis, who who takes a beautiful win with the white pieces here. He will have to uh, play another game as World Cup is, of course, two two classical games, and then uh, and then you go into tie breaks. But uh, now he will have to face Velimir Ivic, uh, where he will be having the white pieces. And if you've seen him play, he is uh, he truly is a great attacker, and it's not going to be easy. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, first game that finished, uh, and uh, what what an, uh, what what a spectacular finish it was. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any of your uh, uh, games that you, uh, any of your favorite games from the uh, FIDE World Cup 2023, do use hashtag suggestion in the comments and I will go over them. Uh, I would like to thank Christoph Mark, Old Games Are Best, Len Herbert, Seth Harper, and Schlercher for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.